Hello, this is Mike, and I want to show you in this video, I'm going to show off the uh, discrete Fourier transform uh, application applied to uh, the stock market. And uh, I uh, trade usually trade the uh, SPXL, uh, which is the uh, three times volatile ETF of the standard and poor. But um, I want to. I added a, in the Bollinger Band indicator to the uh, file, to the, to the chart, and I'll explain uh, the DFT uh, and how you can visualize when to trade uh, based uh, co combining the uh, DFT indicator with the uh, Bollinger Band. The um, let me show you what some of these lines are first. This this big black line is the sum of the major waves of the discrete Fourier transform. The uh, the wave with the smallest frequency is this red line here. That's sine wave right here. And let's see, looks like maybe this line is the next high, uh, going, uh, going upwards in frequency. This would be the next one. And the price is this maroon line. I changed the color uh, to be maroon. And that's the actual price. And the... That's the price as read right off the data. And then this maroon line is, so you can see following the price exactly, that is the sum or the average of the, all the waves. And then all these other little lines are the waves of the discrete Fourier transform. So let me say, if you were just playing and you only, all you saw was the price and the Bollinger Bands. So just imagine there's the uh, upper Bollinger Band, that blue line, and there's a lower Bollinger Band. And the 20 moving average, that is uh, halfway between the upper and lower bands. The, uh, Bollinger, the Bollinger uh, bands are the simply the 20 moving average plus or minus two standard deviations of the price uh, 20 uh, on a period of 20 20 in this case it's minutes okay now uh, so let's just look at the price and you can see it stays within the Bollinger bands very nicely so you could play the Bollinger Bands, but look right here what happened. And this is the problem with just playing the Bollinger Bands. You need something else. Here it comes down to the Bollinger Band. And it comes up, and you might think, well, it's going up to get in. Wrong. See, it comes up, then goes back down. Hits the Bollinger Band again, goes back up. That's another false signal. Then here... It goes, it hits the Bollinger Band and goes up, and that would have been the time to get in. So Bollinger Band, it's staying between the Bollinger Band, but it's hard to tell, read when to get in and when to get out. And then look here, it hit the Bollinger Band, went down, but then went turn and went back up. So that would be a false signal to get out. And it keeps going up. All right, but now look at the, let's combine this sum of the highest, uh, the lowest frequencies, most dominant waves, and you can see that if we add that indicator to the Bollinger Band, we can see here that when this reached this actual uh, a true indication of the prices who want to start up that we've this this has reached a minimum all right so it's a pretty easy to see that uh, that slope is going to zero here 
and the, it's at the Bollinger Band. So with those two, you can see that that's a good signal to get in. So let's see. I suppose a person could plot plot the um, slope of that line and um, and uh, come, but that would give you a better indication, maybe. But it's it's good. You can see the uh, slope going to zero. When that slope is zero, you know you want to uh, look at getting uh, in uh, and in a minimum. Let's see over here at the maximum. Here we see the uh, the uh, some of the waves has hit a maximum here, but the price has had a dip. But right here it has uh, gone through the upper Bollinger, but the price is going down here. And let's see, uh, when it hits the upper Bollinger, when it goes, the price goes through it like that and exceeds it, it usually means it's going to go down just as it did. Not only did it go down, it went all the way to the bottom Bollinger again. Right? And you can see after it reached that bottom, that uh, that curve, the black curve, the sum of the uh, lowest frequencies is reached a uh, slope of zero, a minimum, and it goes back up. It would have been good to get in right here where that price is. Uh, this That black curve is at a minimum, and the price has reached a minimum. Buy low, sell high, right? Okay, so I just wanted to show this video. Again, the discrete Fourier transform it is simply kind of like a regression analysis of uh, that fits the uh, the sum of the waves is equal to the price. Okay, that's all you can say about it. It's not anything about uh, even though the waves are there and they do show the stock market. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to say sentiment of the investors. Uh, but yeah, the, the largest wave is following it. Uh, this little graph shows the amplitude versus frequency. When it's like this, you can see the next frequency. Here's the lowest frequency. Here's the next the lowest frequency. And the lowest frequency is the dominant wave here. Okay, That means the sine wave is the dominant wave. So you can see how the price kind of is following just just the uh, sine wave, that red large uh, sine wave. And you could, plot when that's the case, you could get in when it's in a dip and get out when it's the sine wave is peaked. But only when that's uh, yesterday in the morning, Actually, the second one was the dominant, and this lowest frequency was way, the amplitude was way down here. And uh, it was hard to interpret the uh, VFT to make money in the, in the stock market. But uh, still, this, this curve pretty much uh, gave a good indication. When it reached a peak, it was time to get out, and when it reach the minimum time to get in to buy. All right. Well, that concludes this video. I hope it helps. Uh, by the way, you can uh, get the uh, uh, you can get a, a copy of the file at uh, RiversideSoftwareInnovations.com. Uh, thank you.